the value of auto-suggestion in accomplishing the object of your definite chief aim. One of the greatest uses to which one may direct the power of auto-suggestion is that of making it help accomplish the object of one's definite chief aim in life. The procedure through which this may be accomplished is very simple. While the exact formula has been stated in Lesson 2 and referred to in many other lessons of the course, the principle upon which it is based will be here again described, viz. Write out a clear, concise statement of that which you intend to accomplish as your definite chief aim, covering a period of, let us say, the next five years. Make at least two copies of your statement, one to be placed where you can read it several times a day while you are at work, and the other to be placed in the room where you sleep, where it can be read several times each evening before you go to sleep and just after you arise in the morning. The suggestive influence of this procedure, impractical though it may seem, will soon impress the object of your definite chief aim on your subconscious mind, and, as if by a stroke of magic, you will begin to observe events taking place which will lead you nearer and nearer the attainment of that object. From the very day that you reach a definite decision in your own mind as to the precise thing, condition, or position in life that you deeply desire, you will observe, if you read books, newspapers, and magazines, that important news items and other data bearing on the object of your definite chief aim will begin to come to your attention. You will observe also that opportunities will begin to come to you that will, if embraced, lead you nearer and nearer the coveted goal of your desire. No one knows better than the author of this course how impossible and impractical this may seem to the person who is not informed on the subject of mind operation. However, this is not an age favorable to the doubter or the skeptic and the best thing for any person to do is to experiment with this principle until its practicality has been established. To the present generation, it may seem that there are no more worlds to conquer in the field of mechanical invention, but every thinker, even those who are not accurate thinkers, will concede that we are just entering a new era of evolution, experiment, and analysis, as far as the powers of the human mind are concerned. The word impossible means less now than ever before in the history of the human race. There are some who have actually removed this word from their vocabularies, believing that man can do anything he can imagine and believe he can do. We have learned for sure that the universe is made up of two substances, matter and energy. Through patient scientific research we have discovered what we believe to be good evidence that everything that is or ever has been in the way of matter when analyzed to the finest point, can be traced back to the electron, which is nothing but a form of energy. On the other hand, every material thing that man has created began in the form of energy, through the seed of an idea that was released through the imaginative faculty of the human mind. In other words, the beginning of every material thing is energy, and the ending of it is energy. All matter obeys the command of one form or another of energy. The highest known form of energy is that which functions as the human mind. The human mind, therefore, is the sole directing force of everything man creates and what he may create with. This force in the future, as compared with that which he has created with it in the past, will make his past achievements seem petty and small. We do not have to wait for future discoveries in connection with the powers of the human mind for evidence that the mind is the greatest force known to mankind. We know now that any idea, aim, or purpose that is fixed in the mind and held there with a will to achieve or attain its physical or material equivalent puts into motion powers that cannot be conquered. Buxton said, The longer I live, the more certain I am that the great difference between men, between the feeble and the powerful, the great and the insignificant, is energy, invincible determination, a purpose once fixed, and then death or victory. That quality will do anything that can be done in this world, and no talents, no circumstances, no opportunities will make a two-legged creature a man without it. Donald G. Mitchell has well said, Resolve is what makes a man manifest, not puny resolve, not crude determinations, not errant purposes, but that strong and indefatigable will which treads down difficulties and danger as a boy treads down the heaving frost lands of winter, which kindles his eye and brain with proud pulse beat toward the unattainable. Will makes men giants. The great Israeli said, 
I have brought myself by long meditation to the conviction that a human being with a settled purpose must accomplish it, and that nothing can resist a will which will stake even existence upon its fulfillment. Sir John Simpson said, A passionate desire and an unwearied will can perform impossibilities, or what may seem to be such to the cold, timid, and feeble. And John Foster adds his testimony when he says, It is wonderful how even the casualties of life seem to bow to a spirit that will not bow to them, and yield to subserve a design which they may, in their first apparent tendency, threaten to frustrate. When a firm, decisive spirit is recognized, it is curious to see how the space clears around a man and leaves him room and freedom. Abraham Lincoln said of General Grant, The great thing about Grant is his cool persistency of purpose. He is not easily excited, and he has got the grip of a bulldog. When he once gets his teeth in, nothing can shake him off. It seems appropriate to state here that a strong desire to be transformed into reality must be backed with persistency until it is taken over by the subconscious mind. It is not enough to feel very deeply the desire for achievement of a definite chief aim for a few hours or a few days, and then forget all about that desire. The desire must be placed in the mind and held there with persistence that knows no defeat until the automatic or subconscious mind takes it over. Up to this point, you must stand back of the desire and push it. Beyond this point, the desire will stand back of you and push you on to achievement. Persistence may be compared to the dropping of water which finally wears away the hardest stone. When the final chapter of your life shall have been completed, it will be found that your persistence, or lack of this sterling quality, played an important part in either your success or your failure. This author watched the Tunney Dempsey fight in Chicago. He also studied the psychology leading up to and surrounding their previous bout. Two things helped Tunney defeat Dempsey on both occasions, despite the fact that Dempsey is the stronger of the two men, and as many believe, the better fighter. And these two things which spelled Dempsey's doom were, first, his own lack of self-confidence, the fear that Tunney might defeat him, and second, Tunney's complete self-reliance and his belief that he would whip Dempsey. Tunney stepped into the ring with his chin in the air, an atmosphere of self-assurance and certainty written in his every movement. Dempsey walked in with a sort of uncertain stride, eyeing Tunney in a manner that plainly queried, I wonder what you'll do to me. Dempsey was whipped in his own mind before he entered the ring. Press agents and propagandists had done the trick, thanks to the superior thinking ability of his opponent, Tunney. And so the story goes, from the lowest and most brutal of occupations, prize-fighting, on up to the highest and most commendable professions. Success is won by the man who understands how to use his power of thought. Throughout this course, much stress has been laid upon the importance of environment and habit out of which grow the stimuli that put the wheels of the human mind into operation. Fortunate is the person who has found how to arouse or stimulate his or her mind so that the powers of that mind will function constructively, as they may be made to do when placed back of any strong, deeply-seated desire. Accurate thinking is thinking that makes intelligent use of all the powers of the human mind and does not stop with the mere examination, classification, and arranging of ideas. Accurate thought creates ideas, and it may be made to transform these ideas into their most profitable, constructive form.